Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. I'm loving our new music and I'm loving our next guest. She covers hard hitting news daily as an ABC News correspondent and now she's releasing her second children's book, One Big Heart, a celebration of being more alike than different. Please welcome to our show for the first time award winning journalist Lindsay Davis. All right. Hey. Careful, careful. Hello. Hello. Come on over. How are you? Come down to the circle. You come down to the circle. Yes. <laughs> How are you doing? Good to see you. I have, have a seat right here. Thank you. Yes. We're yes. so happy to have you. What do you do? What do you do? Uh, what type of exercising do you do? Are I you, run. You I do run. run. Yes. yes. Yeah. I can kind of tell. Have a running addiction. Yeah. Do you? And uh, actually, she, her body, mm -hmm. your physique, puts me in the mind of our EP, Helen Swenson. Yes. Oh, very, very, okay. nice. Okay. Very, very nice. Very nice. Nice. Very nice physique. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Thank awesome. you. Well, yes. Awesome. We took you back to the world. in my head. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. My inspiration. Absolutely. Yes. Well, of course, as an ABC News correspondent, you are tasked to to ask the, the hard questions. Yes. And yes. you did just mm -hmm. that at the Democratic um, debate and you did such a great job mm -hmm. at Texas Southern University. What was that like, the vetting process for you to even get there? And what significance does it have being that it was an HBCU? Well, I think, you know, because it was an HBCU, it was really imperative that they represent, right? And mm -hmm. show some, uh, not just a person of color, but also a woman of color. Yes. And I think that that was so important to me, just to be given the opportunity to get a seat at the table. And I didn't realize at the time that I I was only going to be the third African-American wow. woman to moderate a debate. Wow. So I was really feeling, um, as well as excitement, I was Patricia. feeling the moment of, it was for the culture. It was bigger than me. It yes. was about representing for the people, yeah. right? And making sure that the next young black woman would get the same yes. opportunity. Um, and it was also important to me being at an HBCU, and as that's how I started out, saying, since we're here, let's start with young black voters. And I think oh, that I that's a demographic it. that's often dismissed yeah. and forgotten about and not part of the conversation. Right. Yeah. And that was really, uh, it was, so I think it was great all around. And you know, black Twitter came with lots of love <laughs> and support good. for me. Because you know, and you gotta, so, yeah, oh, black yeah, Twitter can go either way. <laughs> exactly, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm so thankful to everybody, the prayers and the kindness and support that I received. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we just launched our uh, initiative, Circle the Vote. Yes. Talk about yes. what we need to be focused on going into 2020. That's well, good. first, vote. Yes. I mean, I think it begins and ends really there. Um, there's a quote that says something to the effect of, you know, when you refuse to vote, that's not an act of rebellion, it's an act of surrender. Mm. And I think that that is what is so critical. Why would you allow someone else at that point to dictate your future, to decide for you what matters most for, uh, you know, your children, for the mm -hmm. laws and legislation uh, all around you? And I think about also, it was not long ago, maybe 50 years ago, people were still dying yes. for that right. Yes. And so why would you give up your power? Why would you silence your voice? Yes, yeah. absolutely. That's true. So I want to talk a little bit about your children's book, though. So I'm very excited about about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, as, as being an ABC correspondent, you cover everything across our country from the best to the worst. Yes. And I, I have to think that that's what inspired <clears throat> your, the title of your mm -hmm. book, uh, being One Big Heart, a celebration of being more alike than yes. different. Mm. Well, for one, I, I have a five-year-old son, mm -hmm. and him growing up in this current climate, where it's not like racism is anything new, but the right. rhetoric seems like it's gotten to kind of a fever, fever pitch lately. And so if he happens to be around, you know, news or hearing uh, the stories, he's, <clears throat> he's taking this in. Mm -hmm. And people will always say that, you know, kids don't see color. I totally disagree with that premise. I think that kids do see color, they just don't assign a value to it. Wow. Yes. And so children already inherently know the messaging of this book, mm -hmm. right, right? Which is basically to embrace yes. despite, yes, we have different skin color and hair and features and likes and beliefs and personalities, but in the end, God gave us all this one special gift. He gave us one big so heart. heart. Yeah, and that's so the true. most important part because that's where love starts. Yeah. So children, you know, my son just started kindergarten like two weeks ago when he comes home and talks about a new friend that he made, mm -hmm. he never says, oh, well, their religion or their color yes. or their background or beliefs. He talks about what they have in common, yeah. what they like to play with. Mm -hmm. And so this to me is, and so there's eight, and that's my oh son. Oh my God. Thank you. Uh, thank Aww. you. And so this to me is really an affirmation to him about stick with this, what mm -hmm. you already believe, because I know there are all these voices out there that you're yeah. hearing, but lo choose love, choose yeah. the common ground. Right, and what can this book teach adults. Well, I mean, that's the, the thing. same thing. Because it's quite <laughs> no, often true. adults who make those divisions, mm -hmm. who make the we versus them, this us versus, this is, you know, the idea of these factions and putting the differences first and why we don't talk to them or why we don't spend that time. And so I think that this message really is 
inherently foreign as, as a mom who's still mm -hmm. reading books to uh, my son, I think that quite often we kind of take in some of the messages. Mm -hmm. And I think really the, the funny thing is, it's as much as I want children to stay with this, this, this affirmation, this is a real gentle reminder to adults. Yes. Let's love, choose love. It's so easy. It is, it is. We make it harder, we make it harder. Yes, yes. 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 much better. It does. Uh, so we talk a lot on the show about bullying. You mm -hmm. know, we know that's a big uh, issue in our country and it, huh. it often leads to suicide, to be yeah. honest with you. Are you hoping that this book will serve as a teaching aid to kind of eradicate that. 100%. I mean, I think that just as important as it is, a lot of people have, have sent me pictures of their children, you know, with the books and everything. They said, you know, she loves it because she found a character who looks just like her, right? Mm -hmm. Just as important as that, I think it's to see characters who don't look just like them. Mm -hmm. yes. And quite often, as parents, I think the key thing is exposing our children to difference. Yeah. Um, when I wrote my first book, I had read this essay that was called uh, Windows, Mirrors, and Sliding Glass Doors. And the idea of it was that Children need to be able to see a mirror in the book. They need to see a reflection of themselves. They need a window that's something that they can perhaps see a world that's different from the one there every day. Right. And if that window is to really truly be effective, then it can transport them. It can serve yes. as a sliding glass door to transport them into this world that's unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. And I think that quite often what we fear, especially as you talk about you know suicide and, and not embracing mm -hmm. you know this this love for self and the hate crimes that are increasing year after year, is this fear of the unknown. And so if we would just expose our children, and perhaps if you don't live in a diverse area, that's when I think it's so important that books and toys, those kind of props that you add into their lives, it's diverse. Yes, my goodness. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I have so many more questions. <laughs> no. Like literally, I wish we had so much more time, but unfortunately we don't. But thank you so much for You're joining amazing. us here. You're amazing. Thank you all for yes. We me. truly do appreciate you. And uh, listen, if you want to get her book, I think you most certainly should. Uh -huh. One Big Heart, A Celebration of Being More Alike Than Different is available anywhere fine books are sold.